All right. Uh, today I will present a very interesting topic re uh, regarding hydraulic fracturing. And we have this outline. Uh, first, I will introduce what hydraulic fracturing is. And then we will talk about uh, rock mechanics and the propan fracturing fluid, uh, designing hydraulic fracturing, and also fracturing operation. Uh, I'm sorry for the background voice, all right? Because we are now uh, in operation. Okay, first I will introduce uh, the hydraulic fracturing. So what is hydraulic fracturing? Hydraulic fracturing is a well stimulation treatment performed by injecting fluid. And this is the most important thing above fracture pressure. We do this to create a highly conductive path from the reservoir to the well bore. And what for? This is to increase the well productivity. Okay, to increase the well productivity. So we inject fluid above the fracture pressure to create a highly conductive path. And to describe the hydraulic fractures, uh, I will present the fracture geometry. We usually describe the hydraulic fractures in the geometry, which include uh, this one, XF, which is the half length of the fracture, and then W, which is the width, all right, the, the width, the opening of the fractures, and also the H, the thickness or the height of the fracture. So we have XF, all right, and then we have the width of the fracture and also the height of the fracture. Okay, so we described our hydraulic fractures in these three geometry parameters, all right? And then, why do we perform hydraulic fracturing? We have several objectives, all right? Of course, the, the goal, the main goal is to enhance the productivity of our well. But we can achieve the productivity improvement through several objectives, all right? The first objective is to change the flow regime. Prior to hydraulic fracturing, what we have is actually radial flow regime like this one. And as you can see, as the fluid approaches the well bore, there will be high pressure drop, all right? Especially at the proximity of our well. This is due to this flow regime. This is due to the radial flow regime. But if we perform hydraulic fracturing and we have fractures like this one, now we change the flow regime from radial flow regime to bilinear flow regime. Why do we call it that way? Because we have two linear flow regimes. The first one is this one. It's linear from the reservoir into the, the wing of our fractures. It's linear, linear. And also the, the linear flow inside the fractures. And the pressure drop caused by the bilinear flow is much smaller compared to the radial flow. And that's why the productivity in hydraulic fracture is better. And then, and the next objective is of course to bypass damage. All right, it is important to note that hydraulic fracturing doesn't eliminate the, the damage, but it bypasses the damage, okay? It doesn't remove, it doesn't dissolve the damage, but it bypasses the damage. So if we have a normal well like this one, we have a normal pressure drop, starting from the reservoir pressure down to bottom hole flowing pressure, okay? If we have formation damage, if we have positive skin factor like this one, all right, the skin damage zone, we will have excessive or extra pressure drop, especially due to this skin zone or damage zone. But if we perform hydraulic fracturing, if we frack the well, then actually the, the pressure drop will be smaller. And that's why finally we, we will have higher bottom hole flowing pressure. And of course, at this condition, our well will produce better. Our well will have higher productivity index. So we have two objectives now. First is to change the flow regime 
And the next one is to bypass the formation damage. And the next one, the next objective by which we can perform the productivity index is of course to improve the area of contact. This is just to uh, illustrate if we have 100 feet untreated vertical well, then the area of contact between the well and the reservoir will be, let's say 222 feet square. But if we have 2000 feet untreated horizontal well, then we can improve significantly the area of contact. But even the horizontal well will have smaller area of contact compared to hydraulically fractured well. You can see by fracking or by fracturing the well, we enhance, we improve the area of contact between the reservoir and our well from 4,000 to even 60,000. And if we perform hydraulic fracturing in horizontal wells, we will enhance the area of contact even larger from 60,000 to 200,000. All right, so as you can see by hydraulic fracturing, we can enhance the area of contact or the area of drainage, drainage we can say, uh, from our well to the reservoir. And also to describe the productivity improvement by the hydraulic fractures, we introduce a new parameter, which is very important if we talk about hydraulic fracturing. And this is actually the fracture conductivity. What is fracturing conductivity? We have this parameter, CFD, which is the hydraulic fracturing, uh, hydraulic, I mean, fracture conductivity. And this is dimensionless. We get that from this formula. So fracture permeability, uh, multiplied by fracture width, divided by reservoir permeability and fracture half length. And we can imagine this uh, hydraulic fracturing or CFD fracture conductivity like a, a big road, okay? A big road. We have the main road here, all right? It's like highway, it's like a big road. The, this big road, all right, the main road is actually the conductivity of the fracture only, all right? The conductivity of the fracture only. And we have feeder road, this one, the feeder road, the smaller roads, all right? Connecting the region with the main road. And actually we can, uh, we can do analogy that this feeder road is actually the flow capacity from the reservoir. So it's like balance, it's like material balance between the fracture conductivity, the flow inside the fracture and the flow from the reservoir, the reservoir flow capacity. And it's like building or constructing a highway. We don't want to underdesign. We, we also don't want to overdesign. What we want is the optimum design. And the optimum design should be close to one. Because there, there, by, by then we will have balance between the flow inside the fractures and between the flow coming to the fractures from the reservoir, all right? If we like, for example, if we have fracture conductivity that is much higher than the reservoir flow capacity, then it is useless because by the end of the day, the, the, the flow, the, the contribution from the reservoir is much smaller than what we have inside the fracture. And also, if we have reservoir capacity that is high, but the fracture conductivity is small, then it's, it's also will not stimulate our, our well, right? Because we have flow, high, high flow from the reservoir, but it is stuck in the middle of the fracture due to low fracture conductivity. That's why what we want is the CFD close to one. And by this formula, later on, we can estimate the productivity improvement by the hydraulic fractures. Okay, and then uh, productivity improvement. First, we compare between the well prior to hydraulic fracturing and after the hydraulic fracturing. The flow rate from the original well is like this one. And after 
it has been fractured, then we will have this one. The formula is actually basically the same, but now we have skin due to hydraulic fractures down there, all right, in the second case. And we do mathematical formulation like this one to get the fault of increase, all right? How much or how the hydraulic fractures multiply the productivity. And we do that by dividing the Q1 and then Q2. And what we have is like this one. Productivity after the fractures divided by the original productivity. We will have this one. And then we plot, all right? We plot this parameter against the CFD or FCD or dimensionless uh, hydraulic conductivity, fracture conductivity, okay? In like this one, in this zone, we can see a linear trend. We can see a linear trend. This is for high permeability reservoir. And approaching this line, we will have this equation. And for low permeability reservoir, we can estimate it is also like a linear, like a straight line. And this is actually can be approximated by this formula. Okay, so we can use this curve or we can use this formula. But the most important thing is this example. For example, if we have reservoir permeability that is very small, tight reservoir, only one millidar C, and then we have fracture permeability, of course, this will be high, 100 dar C or 100,000 millidar Cs and then the fracture width 0.25 inches, and then for the fracture half length 300 feet, and well bore radius 4.25. And then we can calculate by, by using this formula, the CFD, the dimensionless fracture conductivity, which is 6.94. And then we just plot, we go up, and then we touch the, floor, the, 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 the curve, and then we go to the left, so we have this one, this parameter equals to 0 0.889. And then we just can back calculate to get the skin due to fractures, all right? By this one minus this term. And we can calculate this term by getting the numbers from the table. And you can see the skin factor is minus 5.85, which is negative skin. And that's good for our productivity, all right? Negative skin means stimulation. So this will describe how the hydraulic fracturing can perform, can, can improve the productivity, all right? By giving us negative skin. And acidizing cannot, cannot do this, this well, all right? Maybe acidizing can only reduce the skin factor from positive number to zero. But hydraulic fracturing can give us uh, negative skin, uh, minus five, minus four, right? So hydraulic fracturing is very effective to improve the productivity. And after introducing the, the, reservoir, the, the hydraulic fracturing, now we start by discussing about basic uh, geomechanics.